We got interested in risk adjustment when we ran up against a problem. Uh, in doing the atlas, we were looking at differences in uh, medical spending and medical utilization across the country. Uh, and uh, we noticed that once we risk adjusted using uh, the standard methods, which are based on the number of diagnoses that are recorded in claims data or large administrative data, once we did this adjustment, uh, these differences became paradoxical. We traced this back to flaws in the actual process of doing risk adjustment. So we ended up with a strategy essentially of looking at, uh, at the, the fundamental issues involved in risk adjustment. And here the problem is that the number of uh, diagnoses that are recorded in the claims data or in these large administrative data is associated with how many visits people make to doctors. So we began to see what we labeled, ultimately labeled, an observational intensity bias. So regions that had lots of visits, had lots of medical bills, with lots of diagnoses, because the, the insurance companies require a diagnosis for every time you bill it. So it turned out that uh, naturally the regions that had more visits would have more diagnoses. And the really fundamental question, is this reflecting underlying burden of illness or is it an artifact associated with the frequency of visits and therefore related with the supply of medical care? They found this fundamental flaw, if you will, in the standard methodology of uh, risk adjustment in which um, when you apply the standard methods, what you essentially were doing we, is we were adjusting for the practice behavior of the physicians and hospitals and not about the illness of the population. And so that led us to ask the question, if we, because we still are concerned about illness adjustment for a variety of equity, distribution of finances and equity, as well as outcomes assessment. And, and so our concern then, our question was, if, if we're concerned about that, because you do want an apples to apples comparison, what other way can we adjust for illness that doesn't have this problem of this conflation of illness and practice behavior? And that led us to think about alternative uh, data sources which were not part of the practice of medical care, ideally would be coming from the patients themselves. And we found two key data sources that we wanted to evaluate. One was the census data. And then the second one was something called the Behavioral Risk Factor Survey, which is an annual survey done by the CDC. 60% of the variation in age, sex, race, mortality explained by obesity, by smoking, by self-reported illness, by frailty, uh, hip fractures, and cardiovascular uh, disease as measured by strokes. That's where we get our 60% of the variation explained. Yeah. Coming back again to the, to the U.S. context is that Medicare is an example. Medicare has a managed care plan they call the Medicare Advantage. Medicare Advantage uses this standard methodology called condition categories, or HCC, um, as a risk adjuster. This risk adjuster relies on the diagnoses that are in the bills that doctors and hospitals um, create which are completely biased through this observational intensity. The implications of that bias actually are very interesting. Essentially what it does is it, it shifts dramatic amounts of funding toward, from um, low cost, high quality regions to high cost regions because of their apparently ill population. 